which of the following laid down separate set of criteria for liver transplantation in acute liver failure due to paracetamol poisoning options are alfred criteria king's college criteria unos criteria and berlin criteria which of the following laid down separate set of criteria for liver transplantation in acute liver failure due to paracetamol poisoning options are alfred criteria king's college criteria unos criteria and berlin criteria okay before we discuss a little more about paracetamol poisoning comfortably we can rule out option d because when i hear berlin criteria the first thing that comes to my mind is it's a set of parameters describing or defining ards right so berlin criteria is used for definition and diagnosis of ards nothing directly related to paracetamol right so if a patient of paracetamol toxicity develops ards we will be saying that patient has ards depending on the berlin criteria but nothing directly connected to paracetamol poisoning so i can rule that out option d is out now where do we hear about unos criteria i've done a video on liver transplantation and there i did mention that unos criteria basically there is a kind of triaging of uh, recipients for liver transplantation like prioritization of the recipients of liver transplantation so there is a unos priority one group where the priority allocation of the organs is given so one classical example i always tell you to remember is acute liver failure in patients with wilson disease that is unos category 1 right so not not directly or specifically related to because this question is asking separate set of criteria for liver transplantation in alf due to paracetamol poisoning unos is not that right so these two things we can rule out we are left between alfred and king's college criteria we will talk about it what are the important points we need to know about paracetamol poisoning they have asked about the drug of choice and we know that it is nstl system they have asked about the nature of liver necrosis state that is central lobular necrosis okay let me put down these two points one the drug of choice for paracetamol poisoning is nstl system number two thing we need to know is the nature of liver necrosis that is central lobular necrosis central lobular necrosis okay the third thing that they have asked as an mcq is what is considered as the toxin or the toxigenic metabolite of the paracetamol poisoning and we know that is nap qi right so these are all known facts to us right okay now in a patient with paracetamol poisoning the death is mostly because of acute liver failure right so if acute liver failure occurs nsl system is obviously one thing that we would be offering them but beyond that some of the patients do not respond well so predictors of poor outcome include basically development of severe metabolic acidosis which is refractory to fluid therapy and then patients having significant liver failure in the form of inr which is more than 6.5 or serum creatinine which is more than 3.4 mg per deciliter or development of grade 3 or grade 4 hepatic encephalopathy right so what is the grading system we are using here for calling it as grade 3 or grade 4 we are basically using west haven criteria right so on west haven criteria patient has grade 3 or grade 4 hepatic encephalopathy creatinine is more than 3.4 mg per deciliter or patient has inr of more than 6.5 and a ph of less than 7.30 despite fluid resuscitation these are the set of patients who are going to do really bad right so nsl system may not be adequate in those patients and those patients we need to go ahead with liver transplantation and this stems from what is called as king's college criteria for liver transplantation so king's college criteria for liver transplantation is for the liver transplantation in patients with acute liver failure and king's college criteria separates the causes for acute liver failure into two categories paracetamol toxicity and non paracetamol toxicity there are some important differences here like for example if you look at the prothrombin time and the inr inr more than 6.5 confers bad prognosis in case of paracetamol poisoning and calls for liver transplantation but if it is less than that we can still manage with n style cystic but in case of the other causes for the acute liver failure right in case of other cause for acute liver failure if inr is more than 6.5 yes definitely that's an important parameter it can it is considered as like a stand alone criteria for considering the liver transplantation even even when the inr is less than that like for example more than 3 and 1/2 right if the patient is meeting other criteria patient can still be taken up for liver transplantation right for example prothrombin time 
more than 50 seconds or INR more than 3.5, patient has two more of uh, the other parameters. For example, the time from jaundice to encephalopathy more than seven days or age less than 10 years or more than 40 years. They're all bad prognostic factors, right? So if three out of these are met, that also indicates that we should go for the liver transplantation, right? So King's College of Criteria has separate set for the paracetamol poisoning and another separate set for all other causes of acute liver failure, right? So going back to the question, now what makes the sensible answer? Right, so it is the King's College criteria which is used, which is using a separate set of parameters for acute liver failure in paracetamol poisoning. Okay, going forward, just a quick recap, when is liver transplantation indicated in acute paracetamol poisoning? What we basically know is the toxin is NAPQI, the toxin is converted to, right, the toxin is converted to non-toxigenic substances. Paracetamol is metabolized mainly by uh, conjugation and excreted in urine, more than 95% of the total paracetamol, but around 5% is converted to NAPQI by the cytochrome P450, right. And this NAPQI is the hepatotoxic substance, which is converted into non-toxic substances by glutathione. So glutathione supply is the limiting factor. So when you consume large quantity of paracetamol, the lack of glutathione is the one which makes that most of this NAPQI will stay and is not converted to non-toxigenic substances and then that will cause hepatotoxicity, right? Now, by giving N-acetyl cysteine, we can replenish the glutathione stores and help convert this NAPQI into non-toxigenic substances. But if already acute liver failure has set, right? As long as it is mild, probably N-acetyl cysteine would be the only therapy that you would be giving other than the supportive care. But if it is severe, like we discussed in the King's College criteria, then you need to go for liver transplantation, right? So you need to remember this King's College criteria specifically. So King's College criteria for the acute liver failure, a patient has severe metabolic acidosis defined as pH less than 7.30 despite adequate fluid resuscitation, it is an indication for liver transplantation, right? Okay, if that's not the criteria, right? If CBG pH is fine, then all of the following criteria should be met, means INR more than 6.5, creatinine more than 3.4 and grade 3 onwards hepatic encephalopathy, then you will go for the liver transplantation, right? Music